So ladies and gentlemen, now we're into the World Series. Uh, we want to highlight something. Uh, the guy for NBA PR Maine made a huge mistake the other day saying the opening game of the World Series between the LA Dodgers and the Toronto Blue Jays. While wishful thinking, maybe parallel universe, it would happen, but unfortunately Toronto was knocked out by Tampa Bay in the uh, pre preliminary rounds, or the first round, and uh, advanced all the way to the World Series. We wish both teams the best of luck. But we're talking about the various Blue Jay legends of the 19, late 1970s on our recent podcast. And today we're going to be talking about a player that some consider the worst starting pitcher in Toronto history. I don't agree. Anybody that comes within one hit of a no-hitter is just uh, stymied by a bad team. So today we're talking about the legend of the pride of Freeport, Texas, Philip Hoffman. Now, Philip Lee Hoffman, born June 20, 1958, was only uh, 21, uh, 21 years old when he broke in with the Blue Jays in 1917. 79, excuse me. He played uh, two uh, two seasons of Major League Baseball. <coughs> the solo season with Toronto in 79 and later on for the Baltimore Orioles. Now, uh, Huffman uh, first came to prominence by playing high school baseball in Texas, Texas for Brazerwood High School near his native Freeport. Now, Huffman was drafted out of high school in Texas in June 77 by the San Francisco Giants as the team's second round draft pick. In 77, Huffman made 10 starts for the Great Falls Voyagers uh, or Voyagers in the Pioneer Baseball League, a Class A association, going 7 and 3. Now, Huffman was part of the biggest trade probably in Oakland A's history. A 7 for 1 transaction that sent him along with Gary Thompson, Gary Alexander, Dave Hiverolo, John Henry Johnson, Alan Worth, and $300,000 to the Oakland Athletics for former All-Star Vider Blue on March 15, 1978. Mario Guerrero was later sent to the Athletics just over three weeks later on October, April 7 to complete the transaction. Now, Hoffman began, began the 78th season pitching with the Jersey City A's in the Eastern League Double-A Association. Partway through the 78th season, he was promoted to San Francisco's main AAA affiliate, the Vancouver Canadiens. Now, Huffman, along with Willie Horton, was eventually traded from the Athletics to the Toronto Blue Jays for Rico Cardi on August 15, 78, and was transferred to the Syracuse Chiefs. Now, Huffman was high on Toronto's radar for the 79 campaign as a fourth starter, and he made his big league's team roster and remained with the squad for the entire season. Overall, the campaign was a disappointment to some, but pretty well par for the course, as he went 6-18. and He made 31 starts, posting a 5-7-7 earn run average, and gave up 25 home runs. Now, in October, August 27, 1979, Huffman pitched what easily was his best game in his career, tossing a one-hitter against the A's in Toronto. Huffman posted his first win at Exhibition Stadium after six losses. He retired the first 11 hitters, Face only 30 batters in total, and game up uh, the lone hit to light hitting Jim Essien in the sixth inning. He also walked Mike Heat and Mario Guerrero. The win was Huffman's final uh, triumph as a major league pitcher. He said in published reports after the game, It's always great to beat a club you played for. I know all those guys over there. As for thinking of a no-hitter, I wasn't necessarily doing that. It's tough to pitch a no-hitter. I'm happy I got the shutout and only gave up one hit. So it became a slight folk hero at the time. But unfortunately, in 1980, Huffman was set to start the season with Toronto, but was optioned to the team's AAA Farm Club in Syracuse after manager Bobby Maddock chose to go with a four-man rotation. Now, Phil has added a change-up to his pitching, and he's been one of his our top workers, Maddock told the Globe Mail in April 1980. But we want him to get a lot of work, and he'll get it in Syracuse. But the problem is Dave Steve was uh, drafted and ready to go uh, uh, for the 80 season, and obviously there was no room with Clancy and some of the other top pitchers. Now, he eventually uh, remained in the Blue Jays system in 81 as well, going 5-9 and nine with a 5-6-9 earned round average while at Syracuse. Now, he also was a big part of Toronto's mid-1980s resurgence because he was eventually traded to the Kansas City Scouts for all people, legendary Blue Jay Rance Mullenix. He was in the Royal system until April 2nd, 1983, when the, the Royals released him. Then he signed with the Mets for the, the 83 and 84 season, and then eventually was with the Baltimore Orioles in 85, where he played 
two uh, two games uh, with the side. Now, uh, after his release uh, from uh, Rochester, or the Baltimore organization, in '87, he ended up with the uh, the Twins, uh, Portland Beavers AAA Farm Club, going one and two with a terrible 9.37 earn run average. Now, upon retirement, uh, he moved to Rochester, and he was a supervisor for a welding supply company that uh, distributes uh, major major projects, uh, products including liquid oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and flammable gas. Now, for a player that goes six and eighteen on the team, that uh, what uh, what uh, what we like to uh, to say. Uh, Toronto in 1979 again were still uh, building. They were 53 and 109, 50 and a half games out of first place, and unfortunately, you know, they weren't uh, getting any uh, getting any better. Now, there was some uh, shining lights on the team. Alfredo Griffin, Demar Demasa Garcia was right around the corner. Dave, Steve, a few others. So I mean, it's not really Hoffman's fault that Toronto. Uh, Toronto was terrible. It's just a matter of, you know, uh, you know, bad timing and all that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of Phil Huffman. We have a new, a numerous Blue Jay uh, vintage podcasts here on the channel. Please uh, search, including uh, Jesse Jefferson, Mark uh, Lemangelo, uh, some of the playoff uh, breakdowns of the uh, the eighties. But uh, also, like a tribute to the late Tony Fernandez, very well, uh, very missed by the fans. But uh, again, Phil Huffman. That one hitter again. There might be some tape out there. There was at some time from City TV Sports. Uh, if you can find it, uh, good luck. Sometimes these things get posted on YouTube and kind of are lost in the shuffle. But Phil Huffman, to me, I saw him pitch. Decent guy, only 20 years old. I think he should have given him a bigger chance. But again, Dave, Steve, and Jim Clancy were in the system. That was their big one too, and that's what it was going to be. You know, Phil could have won 10 games until he may have not been at the club because you know Steve was the ace and Clancy number two. Thanks for listening. Bye.